Welcome back. Welcome to our third episode, episode three, session three of the Walking Dead Universe role playing game. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you have subscribed, thank you very much for being a subscriber. I very, very much appreciate uh, your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not give it, give it a go? Just subscribe and uh, you'll see when new videos come out. It helps the channel, it helps it grow, as everyone says, and it actually does. Uh, and if you like what you're seeing today, please feel free to hit that like. Uh, and if you have any comments, uh, or be even positive or negative, Please feel free to stick them in a comment and uh, we will respond to them. Uh, and that's about it. So we left our character, Simon, uh, Simon Halton, uh, with his uh, comrade, his uh, anchor, uh, Kai, Kai Wilson, uh, returning from an excursion into Richmond uh, for fuel with a badly injured soldier, Private Burmy, Private Berman, uh, and their Haven colleague, Ronald, left behind dead. Now, as has been discussed, when we return, the Haven leader, Amy, is probably going to be less than pleased with us uh, for, for this. So we need to think of a way of dealing with that. And I was thinking about that since, since last session. And what I'm thinking is, is basically, uh, Simon has, there is always a chance as a drive and issue is morally flexible. And we have Kai Wilson, who Kai has also got, uh, does what it takes as her issue. Uh, so what we might do, oh, I didn't notice that. She has manipulation trained and medicine trained. Uh, so what we might do is that on the return, as they're trying to bring back the injured uh, Private Berman, that, who is slowly getting uh, more sick. So uh, Private Berman ha has, so I reread, I reread that bit because someone's comments uh, uh, made me think about it. And I reread that entry in the Walker attack table as based on someone's comments. And so uh, Private Berman is dead. Basically, he has a walker bite to the stomach. He will die in two days, uh, but will begin to develop a fever. I mean, do we know this at this point? We're pretty confident, I would say, about this. But Kai and I would possibly think that we, you know, it might be a bite, it might not be a bite. We still need to try and save him. Uh, also, if we come back with just fuel and a dead Ronald, we're like, we were already threatened by him. It should kick us out. So I think Simon is going to talk to Kai on the return uh, whilst, whilst uh, Burmy is drifting in and out of consciousness uh, and suggest that we agree to tell Amy that Ronald decided to stay behind. He found, we well, don't know, we'll say a radio because he had that radio he was playing with. We will tell Amy that Ronald found a, a stationary radio in a vehicle and said that he wanted to try and fix it and that he would come behind us. Uh, now, I already think I know what will then happen uh, and we're then gonna have Burmy that we're gonna say he's injured, he's got cut in the stomach when we were being attacked and ran away, uh, he needs medical aid and then we're gonna have to try and find medical aid. Now, I looked on a map uh, for the area uh, and so I know what we, what we'll probably do, but uh, probably I'm jumping ahead of myself uh, so what we are supposed to do at the end of every session that we didn't do is XP. And so uh, I have done uh, the XP for, for Simon. Uh, Simon gained four experience points because the list goes as follows. I'll do it this time, read it through, and then so you know how you do experience. Uh, but then we, I'll just say like I do with Twilight 2000, what the XP is. So the, just like most uh, uh, freely press, uh, publishing rather, uh, there's a list of questions. The first one, did you attend the session? You don't get that for solo play. Uh, did you achieve something important? What? We got fuel. Uh, did you learn something? Yes, we learned that Milestone Park has people living in it that we're going to need to deal with if we want to get food. Uh, did you explore at least one new sector on the map? We did. Did your drive, your issue, or any of your relationships make an impact on the session? Uh, yes, I think it did, uh, particularly with the take it doing what it takes because we just left Ronald behind. We didn't try and save Ronald. 
did you hold a dearly parted monologue? That was the sixth one and not yet, but I'm about to. Now, what a dearly departed monologue is, is at the beginning of every session, uh, you basically do a, a letter to uh, someone who either has died, a PC or NPC, or you think he's dead uh, in, in a sort of retrospective type way. As such, dear Ronald, I didn't really get to know you and you were a very interesting person, a bit shy. Apparently you were a poet, but I never got to read your poems. You came with us, with Kai and I, to come and collect fuel. And really, I only wanted you there because I wanted to see what made you tick. I wanted to see how you worked and how you functioned. And all I discovered is that you make very foolish mistakes. Why did you approach that car without checking the back seat first? You always check the back seat first. Everyone learns that at the beginning. If you didn't learn that at the beginning, you died. How did you survive, Ronald? How did you stay alive? I wish you hadn't died. I could have had those questions answered now. I could have watched you and studied you and seen how you worked, but you didn't. You were foolish. You approached that car because you thought you were safe, because we were there, and you weren't. And now, Ronald, you're dead. And now I'm gonna have to tell Amy you're not dead, because otherwise we're dead. Thanks, Ronald. So they will return back to uh, the Haven and as they get back, they're gonna see uh, Amy and Amy's gonna ask, Where, where's, where's Ronald? He stayed behind. We've got this bloke, he's a soldier. He knows some information about Marsden Park, but he's really badly injured, Amy. We're gonna have to see to him to keep him alive. Did he get bit? No, he's got his stomach cut. We were chased by zombies and he got cut on some glass whilst trying to climb through a car. Now, what I might have, because she doesn't trust either of us uh, due to that tape, I'll put that map up, uh, the interrelationship map. Uh, she doesn't trust uh, me or Kai, uh, so, or she dislikes me, she doesn't trust Kai. So what I might do is, is what we're gonna use is I'm gonna see if Kai can assist me so that's why I said, oh, I didn't realize Kai had manipulation. So Kai is going to attempt to roll manipulation. Uh, and then uh, I will, if she has a success, she can give me one dice uh, in, assess in assisting. And then I will attempt to roll to manipulate Amy into believing that Ronald is left behind. If it fails, I don't know what we're going to do. If it succeeds, I do know what we're going to do. So. Uh, I found, like, as I put that little thing at the beginning, I found, uh, ChatGP actually found, I didn't find it, uh, the entrance. So we have uh, Kai is trained in manipulation, which gives her five dice. Now, NPCs don't get stress, so we don't have to roll a stress die for, for Kai. So Kai gets five dice. Uh, our current threat in the area is one. Actually, why don't I, actually, no, let's do something different. I did think about this just before I hit play, like start on these. I'm gonna roll stealth. Four, five, and I've got three stress at the moment. So I'm gonna roll stealth, which is us trying to get to the base without elevating this, which is starting at one, so they're just milling about, they don't really know we're here. Uh, we've got no successes, but we've got no failures. So uh, we don't sneak up. The watch on the top of the roof easily sees us coming, but I am not gonna boost the threat up by uh, us throwing a walker, because if we rolled a walker, then the threat would have gone up. So, <sighs> I'm sticking with that, I don't know. <sighs> write, write a letter of complaint. Uh, so, we will do, now do, so we're in We're in the base, Amy's approached us because they saw us coming, he's helping us with Burmy, she's a bit worried that he may be, may be bit, we're gonna try and convince her that he's not bit, and Ronald is just behind and he's all safe and it's all great and we left him behind nice and safe and he's gonna follow up or we'll go and get him, whatever. So first off, Kai is gonna try. Kai gets no successes to give me to help me. So uh, Amy wants nothing to do with Kai. I have four dice in empathy, two dice in uh, manipulation and then at the moment I'm quite stressed. I've got three stress. Oh, one for that. Okay, so I've got one success, but one uh, walker. So I, I, we can put that down to, well, what's, 
let's just give, let's give her a four dice. So she's four dice. So we've got one walker. So whatever happens, she's she's, she's annoyed. <laughs> I don't know. Can I say that? Uh, she's really annoyed. She's she's. I'm gonna say she's pissed off with us. Whatever happens, whether she believes us or not, she's pissed off with us. Now I'll give her a four dice, which is what untrained is. Roll. If she gets one hit, she doesn't believe us. She doesn't believe us. What happened to him? All right, maybe I'll push. If I push, I automatically get plus one strain. Okay, if I push, I'm gonna push, which means I get plus one stress, which puts stress up to four. God, I'm stressed, I'm stressed out. It's just like real life. Uh, so she's got one hit, she doesn't believe. So what we're gonna say, uh, we're, gonna start, we're gonna start really laying it on thick and we're gonna start using medical talk uh, and laying it on thick with, like, with the medical stuff about Burmy, trying to distract her about Burmy. Uh, say Ronald was desperate to try and prove himself. Like honestly, Amy, you've got to believe us. Uh, we just need to get uh, Burmy into the base so as we can work out what we do next. So I'm now on four stress. All right, <laughs> there we go. So we, after pushing it, we get two hits, which beats her one hit and we get no more uh, walkers. And so she is, she in the end says, all right, okay, let's just deal with him and then we'll deal with what happens with Ronald afterwards. Uh, now, actually that leads into what I w was thinking would happen if she believes us. Uh, so we will then take Burmy in, lay Burmy inside on a cot. Now he's bleeding loads. We're gonna attempt to uh, do a medicine check. So I would get a total of five dice plus four stress. Uh, Kai, who is trained, would get five dice, no stress. So Kai is gonna do that. And I, so Kai is gonna take the, her basic medical kit. Uh, what does basic medical kit give you as a plus? Hold on, so, uh, so when you roll a check, you can use gear to your advantage. So gear can help you in rolling, rolling check. Now, Kai has got basic medical gear. So I need to know what plus basic medical gear gives you. I'm assuming a plus two, but let's see if we can find it. All right, here we go. Uh, we have basic medical gear gives plus one to a medicine roll. So I'm gonna just note down a plus one next to that so as I don't forget. Uh, so it's not a plus two, it's a plus one. So she gets five dice plus one uh, for her check to see if she can stop Burmy's bleeding for now, so she's gonna do that. Uh, no, he still keeps bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. Uh, ooh. All right, she will, I don't, they can't push. Uh, NPCs can't push rolls. So there's no successes there. So he's bleeding. All right, he's bleeding. Uh, and there's not a lot we can do about that. So basically after a few, an hour or so, he's, he's dead. Oops, we need to go now uh, to at least show willing. Okay, so we will go over to Amy. Amy, whilst we, so I've been trying to help Kai. Uh, oh, I could roll. No, that's that's just fudging it. Uh, uh, so I've been trying to help Kai save Burmy. That's not looking good. Oh God, we're less people now. We're gonna have to get people from somewhere to fix this up. Otherwise we might as well go join the people at Marsden Park. Amy's really annoyed, but he's worried about Ronald. So Amy's over talking to Nicholas and uh, Damien. Now Damien, based on that, that chart, Damien felt sorry for Ronald. So Damien is gonna wanna go and see how Ronald is and make sure Ronald's okay. Uh, Nick, Nicholas, loves Damien. So though Nicholas didn't have any real follow like feelings towards Ronald whatsoever, just like took the piss out of him the whole time, Nicholas does like Damien, so Nicholas is one going to go with Damien to support Damien. So Amy is basically saying, I need you two to go and find out what happened to Ronald and bring him back. No matter what he's doing, no matter how important he thinks it is, he needs to come back here. He's going to kill himself if he's out there by himself. So we will have, uh, so I'm going to, oh, hold on. So Nick and Damien are going to go on a run. So that's an N. PC run, which you can do, and we will work out to do. But first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rush over to Amy and say, the soldier, Berman, Private Burmy is dying. He is 
dying, he's bleeding to death. We need to get some advanced medical equipment now and save his life. Where is there near here? Now, I looked up on the internet, there is actually, there's no hospitals near North Richmond. You have to try, travel quite a long way out of North Richmond to get to a hospital. It's the beauty of Sydney. Uh, but there is, believe it or not, a vet hospital in North Richmond, a quite a big, quite well-equipped vet hospital. So we will make a survival roll. Uh, has any, have any of these got, oh, well, Damien has. Damien is trained in survival, which will give him five dice. Uh, what have I got? For survival, I only would get four dice for survival. So Damien, uh, who is standing there as I run over and say this, Damien, I'm gonna get Damien to do a roll and then Damien will do an assist on me. So Damien gets five dice, three, four, five. Uh, Damien gets two hits. Uh, so he is going to give one of those. Oh, do you get an extra dot? Hold on, let me look up assisting. The reason I'm looking it up is if you give get given automatic success, that's all we need is one success. Oh, that's not how you do assisting. Uh, helping each other. When you make a skill where others may help you, they need to describe what they do to help, and it has to make sense that they are actually contributing. Just being there and saying encouraging words is not enough. When you are helping someone, you cannot do anything else at the same time. You gain plus one to your skill roll for every person helping you, up to a maximum of plus three. PCs can help even if they have a zero in the relevant skill. NPCs can only help you if they are trained, expert, or master in the skill. Right, so that's not how it's done. So <laughs> both of those were wrong. So he is trained, so I get a plus one, which means I have to roll, which is a wits of three, a survival of one, and I've got a stress dice of four. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do if I roll a walker. I didn't, but I got two hits. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we, I, I will turn around and go, look. Uh, and so, uh, Damien will say, isn't there a vet around here? And then I will go, yes, there's a vet hospital, North Richmond, not that far away. We can get there and get back and get equipment here. If we cannot get something back, I decided this as I was writing it down. If we can't get something here by the end of today, he's dead. He will bleed to death. We can staunch the wound as much as we can, and then we can go and go and get it. Now, Amy, will you trust me and Kai to go and get something from the hospital? No. Oh, actually, let's, let's, uh, let's do, so let's do a Oracle. We're gonna do Oracle, but we're gonna make it uh, an unlucky dice, so we'll roll two dice and we're gonna take the lowest. Just remember, one is an extreme no, two, three is no, four, five is yes, six is an extreme yes. So we're gonna make it the lowest of these two. One, extremely no. No, I do not trust you, I do not want you to go, I wanna keep my eyes on you, I'm coming with you. We will go to the hospital. Nick, Damien, go find Ronald. I don't trust he isn't gonna turn do we tie him up? I, I, oh. See, I, I didn't think of that. I wanted him untied so he would turn and then when Nick and Damien come back. All right, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna try and manipulate her not to, but if I fail the manipulation, we're not gonna worry about walkers. I'm just rolling this to see if we can get her not to tie him up uh, and that way it makes it more interesting if he, if he turns before they come back. Uh, ooh, that's a lot of hits. Okay. Uh, we make up some nonsense about it not being good for his health. He needs to keep moving to keep his blood flowing. Otherwise, some nasty stuff's gonna happen to him and he will die before we get back. So, our next challenge, so we're gonna do a run, NPC run, uh, either this session or the next session, it depends how long this takes. Uh, I've got, how long have I got? I've got about 20 minutes and then either we're gonna have a cut and then start again, uh, or that will probably end the session. So we are going, our challenge, so this is, this is the, the order that we run things in, which I forgot to do this, I forgot to do the solo player uh, session structure. I just, I just got into it because I was all excited. Uh, first off, we're gonna roll clocks quickly before we've done the challenge. Terribly sorry. Uh, so army base, uh, the army base equipment swarm is a two, so that doesn't go up. 
is it equal to uh, clocks? I, th I can't remember. Roll for each clock in your challenge sheet in following segment if you roll above the number. No, nope. so that doesn't go up. Uh, the other NPC swan, which is the church, that doesn't go up. The useful item with the dude, that doesn't go up. The mobile lo lab with the vaccine, that doesn't go up. Uh, and then we've got our uh, Crimson Brotherhood, that goes up. The Crimson Brotherhood have, found, have heard a bit more about what's going on over here. So that has gone to three clock, three ticks. Uh, we are not supposed, we, we do, should roll up a new rumor, but we weren't supposed to do one last session. So the mobile lab with vaccine we're doing today. Uh, run a scene where the other NPCs interact with it. So we've got uh, a challenge. So well, our challenge is actually gonna be because of Ronald. Uh, he, they're gonna go off and, and find Ronald. Uh, we are going to do a run to go and try and find uh, uh, advanced medical equipment. So, we are in the sector. We are going to grab uh, food just in case we have to, to stay out overnight. But it's in the same sector. Let's just grab the map so you can see. So one of the benefits of solo role playing, I've said this before, but I don't think I've said it for a while, is that you can drop it into other things. It's very hard to organise a group of people and say to them, I've got 40 minutes and then I have to be on a Teams call. Can we have a quick session? Because they're gonna go, well, no, because well, I've got longer than 40 minutes or shorter than 40 minutes. But if it's just you, you can say, I've got, I've got 25 minutes until I have to pick my partner up from the airport or pick my partner up from over there or drop someone off. I'll just have a quick game. And that's the benefit. So this is our haven here. Uh, this is where North Richmond is. The hospital is actually in here, is in this sector here. So I will do a little tab and say vets. So we have vets within this sector. So we don't have to leave this sector to go somewhere else. Nick and uh, Nick and Damien are gonna have to go into Richmond and then come back. So they will take at least one day. So we are gonna go here but because we're, we're not moving into a new sector we're doing the same sector but it's, we're still going to do a scout roll to make sure that we don't trigger any of the zombies as we're attempting to move from the haven to north richmond hospital and then i'll describe north richmond hospital actually i'll try also i'll try and find a picture of it and put it up because i don't actually know what it looks like uh so we've got a scout roll which is so how do we get how do we get our stress down I don't really want four stress dice going into this. Okay, so we can, via a simple social interactive reaction with anyone, relieve one point of stress. We can, if we spend an hour or more with one of our anchors, relieve all of our stress. This can only be done once per session. Typically, this is played out as one short scene. So, before we're gonna say to Amy that we need to get ready. And so uh, we're gonna say, we just need to get our stuff together. We need to get ready and we need to be okay. Can you keep an eye on Burmy? Uh, Kai and I are gonna go to where we were, we were sleeping. Now we're not together together, but we do stay very close together. So one of the things I had is basically Kai and I almost had a relationship start building up whilst we were working in the hospital together. We started to go out for lunch to each other. We started to have coffees with each other, just hang out with each other all the time, talk to each other. We were texting each other all the time. Then, everything broke out and that broke out just as the relationship was starting to build up to that point where one of us was going to say something uh, and then all hell broke out and from that point till now we've just been trying to keep each other alive and so we will go uh, out to the back start getting our stuff together and as we're doing that uh, we will look at each other and Kai will reach out her hand and I will hold her hand and we'll look at each other and go it's going to be all right we will get through this we've always got through everything we will do what it takes to do, and we will, we will survive this. If it looks like Amy is gonna do anything bad, we'll deal with her at the vets. All we need to do is get through today. If we get through to the end of today, and we get to see tomorrow, it's a new day, we'll find something else and somewhere else to go. We can go to Marsden Park, we heard that rumor about the church, we can go anywhere, we will get through today and let go of each other's hands and keep packing up, backing up our backpacks. Uh, we'll just both have a bit of a sigh uh, and then go off to meet Amy and I'm gonna set, reset my stress to zero. So, we will then 
move off to do a solo our solo run and we'll run through the process and there's going to be a cut because I want to get this done for this session uh, which means I've got 10 minutes and I can't do it in 10 minutes we need to move from the Haven to where North Richmond Veterinary Hospital is it's a fair, I think it's a fairly big building. It looked like a fair bit, fairly big building from a top down view on Google Maps. I didn't look at the actual building itself. So when you see it, it's slightly, I haven't seen it yet. Future me, future me who's editing this, he's seen it. This me, past me, hasn't seen it. Uh, so we will imagine it's a, a, it's a, shall we call it, a, I'm going to think it's a vet hospital. Most vet hospitals are either normal sized or larger than normal sized buildings. So we're going to call it, for now, for, for, you know, giggles, we will call it a uh, larger building. Now, there's a table that you can roll on where you go exploring a building where you can roll on that. So this is a fairly normal building. So think in the th thinking in this theatre of the mind type manner, not only speeds up gameplay, but encourages you to think of the building in abstract terms of size, not in terms of layout. So we're going to say that this has a... D3 plus one floors to it. So it's got two floors. So that's not, I mean, most vets would only have be a one floor, F at most two floors. And we're gonna say it has, let's say we want rooms that we can go exploring. And we go, so what we've got is, when exploring a building, roll for a random threat level each time you enter a new section or floor. However, uh, instead of using a random threat level table from today, use the modified table below. All right, in buildings with multiple sections or floors, add one. Okay, so we're gonna say it has at least four sections, possibly 10, which would be a D4 plus a D6. So it's got nine sections. Nine sections between two floors, we'll say the ground floor has five and the top floor has four. We are looking for advanced medical gear. Uh, so we will be going from room to room uh, scavenging for advanced medical gear. So first off, we will need to come to the building. At the moment, we're trying to slowly move sneakily through North Richmond, avoiding the odd walker. Uh, so what we can imagine is, uh, in all intents and purposes, the area of North Richmond looks okay. It, there's the odd car that's parked weirdly uh, there's the odd area, but most of North Richmond doesn't look majorly changed. The one thing when you really start to notice is you notice that the grass in gardens, the grass in the verges is long. I mean, it's not, North Richmond is not particularly well kept, uh, but it's longer than normal. Then you start to see that there's litter where there shouldn't be litter. And then really what hits you is the silence. There's no cars. There's hardly any birds or wildlife. There's the odd rustle. And then there's the scraping sound. Slowly, you hear the scraping sound. Just in the back of your hearing, just in the back of the distance, you hear it. A slow shuffle scrape that's pretty much constant. And that's when you notice the people moving. Just out of the corner of your eye from around corner, every now and then you see the slow paced scraping shuffle of the dead. Dismembered, dirty, wind covered, rain covered, dead. Slowly moving around. There's not a lot of them, but there's enough that there could be trouble. There's enough that if they hear you, they will come for you. And that's what we have to be careful of. So we are going to make a, I guess it's a scout roll to try and suss out the area and get there without causing any trouble. So we have three wits and two scout. Uh, I don't, so Kai, uh, neither Kai or Amy are trained in scouting, so they can't assist. So I am tra trained in scouting, so I will attempt to get us from here over to, uh, to the hospital in one piece. I need one success 
or we will bump into a wall put and elevate the threat level to two. All right, oh, okay. you saw that. I'm gonna re-roll and be a bit more careful. Oh, that was lucky, wasn't it? Uh, so we got three successes. So we managed to get all of us by avoiding the odd walker, going a long way around. It takes a bit of time, but we get to North Richmond Veterinary Hospital. And we're standing outside North v Richmond Veterinary Hospital and we can see, this is where we can see that things don't look normal. Uh, there's a couple of smashed up cars in the, the parking lot, uh, in the car park, sorry, in the car park, because uh, I'm English, it's a car park, not a parking lot. Uh, it's like it's pavement, not a sidewalk. Uh, and we approach the doors. Uh, now the doors should be automatic doors, but one is slightly skew width, like someone has tried to, to uh, barge it open. And we can see that there's some very black, old blood smeared across the door and onto the floor. And we can see that there's parts of body uh, internal organs. And then we can see where it looks like there's handprints that someone has forced themselves to stand. There's a handprint on the glass as someone steadied themselves standing. And then we can see drag marks as something moved away. We can assume someone was trying to break in. They made too much noise. They got caught, they got et, they got turned. They are now one of the walkers. We now have to try and get in to, uh, to the building and getting through the door. So the first thing we need to try and do is try and get through the doors. Uh, Amy is trained in false. So Amy has got T for false, so Amy can false doors open. Uh, Simon has a strength of three and two false. So strength of three, two false. And Amy is gonna stand next to Simon and try and help wedge and pry the door open. Amy is kitted out. I don't know if you remember, but Amy has come with, uh, Amy's got like loads of gear. So she has an assault rifle, she's got a knife, she's got some explosive play, she's bought her night vision goggles, she's got a pistol. So she's kitted out. Uh, I don't think even we've got a torch between us. Oh no, I do, I've got a flashlight. Sorry, a torch. Uh, so I have a torch. Uh, so, so Kai and I will have a torch. Uh, Amy has got that. So uh, we've got a total of six dice and we're trying to get this open. If we fail, then we can't get it open. I'm gonna to have to push, which involves a stress dice, which will then mean that we could warn the walkers. So this won't warn the walkers if we fail, we just can't get the doors open. We can't get the doors open. So we're trying and trying and trying and pushing and budging, and we're not making too much noise, but we can't get the door open. And we, this is starting to cause us a bit of stress, because if we can't get in, like we might have to smash in a window, and that's definitely gonna elevate uh, and let them know. So, Using, so we'll get one push attempt. So I've now got one stress as we're starting to get stressed trying to get in through here. Sweat is dripping. Uh, we decide that Kai will try and get in as well. So the push is Kai's gonna try and get in as well, which causes me stress because I don't want Kai to hurt herself on the glass. Or maybe that could happen. Uh, we get one hit uh, and we get no walker rolled, thankfully. And so there's a, there's a quiet creak and we break, there's a, there's a snap sound, uh, which makes us all freeze uh, as the lock mechanism breaks uh, from age and then we be, are able to slide the door open. Uh, we see inside is the a standard veterinary's uh, uh, foyer. I'm in seconds. I'll do this bit and then there'll be a bit of a cut. Standard uh, vet's foyer. Uh, with uh, various things to keep uh, people entertained, you know, animal magazines and things like that. Uh, Bushwalker Australia, I didn't know that existed as a magazine. And magazines still exist, so they would be in the waiting room. Uh, uh, in the waiting room, but there's just, there's a strange smell in the air and then it hits us and we know what the smell is. This is the smell we've smelled everywhere. This is the smell of death mixed with an undertone that can only be the animals. And so we slowly step in and agree to explore and find some advanced medical gear. So we have five sections on the ground floor that we wanna check and then there's four upstairs. We will start with section one. So maybe, maybe five sections is too much. 
Because what, what I've just read is it says, if you're scavenging in the building, use the luck oracle to see if you can find anything. An extreme yes result means you can roll twice on the scavenging table. The luck oracle can only be consulted in this way once per section or floor of the building, not once per room. So I'm gonna drop that from five sections to three, and then from four at the top to two, meaning, so that makes sense. So we've got uh, downstairs, we would uh, look around. So maybe upstairs we can say that they've got two theaters and downstairs there's a the bit at the back where they'd be looking after the dogs and, and the animals. Uh, and there, so we've got a storeroom. We've got an area where they they keep the animals and look after them, like do the treatment rooms downstairs and then the reception area. And then upstairs we have the surgeries. So five areas in total. So we will start start to look that we will, as a group, we will go around and we're gonna start searching the building. So our first area we're gonna enter uh, as carefully as possible, we're gonna go downstairs. So we're gonna randomly roll a threat for, for this. So we'll use this here to maintain our threat and our threat will begin, is beginning on, uh, let's roll a D6. So a random threat level for solo is one to three zero, four five six is one, six plus is two. Every time we encounter a walker, the plus will go up by one, two. So we've got a threat of zero. Just to remind you, threat of zero is you are in the clear and safe for now. So at the moment we're in the clear and we're safe. If whilst we're scouting and whilst we're doing anything, we will roll a walker, the threat is gonna go up because we are going to encounter a walker and we'll have a random, the threat will just go up to one, once we've hit to a threat of two, uh, we will we will we'll work things out. So in our first area, we're scanning around the front front of the, the building. We are going to, uh, if you're scavenging the building, use the luck oracle to see if you find anything. An extreme, okay. So we will go at the front, we're gonna use a negative uh, to see if we find anything. So the lowest is a three and a three is no. So we start looking around the front, which is where the reception area is, and we don't find anything. I really need to put these tables on the screen. Uh, so we don't find anything around the front, front of the area, and so we're gonna carefully move into the next area, so we find nothing. Uh, there is just uh, bad smells cut drifting from the other parts of the building, so we're using uh, torches to, to see where we are, uh, just sharing my my torch uh, to see where we are. Uh, Amy won't put her night vision on yet and doesn't need to, but she's ready to, to defend. And so we're gonna move into the next section. Uh, so if we've got the threat of zero, we'll just roll. If we uh, have a higher level threat, we're gonna do a survival or scouting, survival roll for finding stuff. So we move into the next section uh, where we've still got no threat. So this area is, is the area where we, uh, where they would look after that. So you know, like the, the treatment rooms with a little slidey door and then you bring your dog, put it on a, 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 the table and they have a look at it. There's not much in these rooms, uh, but there might be some medicine that we might be able to use. We're still gonna use low. Uh, so three is again a no. So there's nothing in here either. So we're gonna push through to the back of the room uh, where they, the, the dogs or the and cats and things are kept in things, uh, where the animals are kept in cages. This would be quite big because it's uh, 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 the, a veterinary hospital, and so it's a huge space out the back with lots of cages. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, let's see. If we give it a plus three, it means it's automatically not going to be a zero. So if we roll one plus two is a three. No, we'll give a plus two, a plus two to the roll. So if we roll a one, then it's there's no one in here because I don't because all the cages that uh, definitely would like there to be someone in here. So four is a six, which is a threat two. Uh, so now we're at a threat two. Just to remind you. So a threat two is there are walkers close by, but they are not aware of you yet. The gym can draw. So basically, as we come in, we can hear some noises. Uh, at the back 
of the, uh, the back of the room. Uh, and as we, we, have, we, we look, so I'm gonna right roll a scout roll because the flashlight gives me a plus one. So two dice, plus three for wits, plus one for uh, the stress dice, and plus one for my torch. We're gonna shine the torch, so it's black room. We can just about see there's some just light filtering in through the open door. We've moved quite quietly. There is noise in this room at the back, uh, at the back of the room where there's some cages. Uh, let's see, we're gonna try and have a look and see what it is at the back of this room. Uh, so we've got one hit, no walkers, that's good. And so we're able to move slight, quietly and the torch moves from the floor up we can see uh, uh, legs which are wearing sort of a greenish co covered uh, uh, fabric, which is the, the so obviously it's one of the veterinary staff. And we can see that one of their arms uh, is missing. Their left arm has been torn off and hanging limply from their right hand, there's what is left of a furry type of animal that looks like it's been bitten and chewed and gnawed on uh, and around. The, the jaws, uh, stubble uh, jaws and milky eyes. Uh, we can see there's blood and bits of fur is stuck to, to the beard of this veterinary staff member who is standing at the back uh, and seemingly uh, isn't we, our, our torch, because of our role, our torch doesn't catch their attention, but they, you know, they are here. So definitely there are walkers in the building. So we're now gonna get a, a plus one is gonna carry forwards to, to our, the rest of the checks. Uh, we are gonna have a look around here. Uh, I am going to roll a double low uh, to see if we find anything for the oracle and a, a stress dice. If a walker comes up, then we are going to get a walker attack as we're, this, this dude is gonna attack us uh, and this will tell us if we find anything in here. Uh, so a low is a two, which is a no, we don't find anything, but we are able to hunt around, we don't find anything at all. So we're gonna go upstairs. Upstairs, I'm gonna give us a high. So a double high in the next two sections. Oh no, so that was the back of the room, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've done the front, we've done the back. So we've got, uh, downstairs has been covered. We've searched around downstairs. Uh, we haven't been able to find anything useful, so now we have to go upstairs. So I'm gonna give us a scout roll to get up the stairs quietly without causing any uh, disturbances, uh, which again is gonna give us six dice because we have our torch uh, and we have one stress dice from uh, the, our stress. We need at least one hit to successfully go up the stairs, otherwise we are going to be spot, spotted and we will elevate, we're making noise. Uh, and then we'll either elevate the threat or we'll do a, a, a walker attack. Okay, so uh, we we will we will use so the floorboard creaks, which causes us stress, and then we'll we use that stress to re-roll. So that gives us two stress dice, the torch, and our stats. So now we're going to attempt. So we've gone up the stairs and we've, we've creaked, and we're all standing still, like terrified, standing still as we're attempting to go up these these. Uh, metallic -y stairs to the second floor where we're sure that the surgery is going to be. Okay, we've got one hit. Uh, that then pushes us, so with that one hit, we're able to clear the rest of the stairs and we get up to the top of the stairs. It's pitch black and we've got, we can see that this is where the surgeries and various areas are. We've got two areas at the top here. This is where we're gonna need to search. We've got plus one. So in going into that first area, we will see what our threat is for this area. Three plus one gives us four. Four means that we're on a one, which means uh, one is that they're here. Uh, here. They are around here, but they haven't noticed us. Uh, we can sing, we could suffer a single walker attack if we mess up a skill, skill test. Uh, uh, a two is they're close by, but they're still not aware of us. So there's lots of them close by. So we can hear movement in rooms and everything is pitch black. And we are going to attempt to search the first one. Uh, so the first, which is section four. Uh, so we've got a threat of one in here. Uh, 
uh, we will attempt to do a search. So we could do, I could either do a scouting roll to try and find something, uh, or we could just use the luck die. If you're scavenging in the building, use the luck oracle to see if you find anything. An extreme yes result means the or luck oracle can only be consulted in this way once per section or floor of the building, not per room. So we could do a, a roll so why don't we do, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a scout roll and for every hit, we'll add one to the luck roll. There we go. Uh, so we've got a scout of two, wits of three, our stress is two. Oh, and a torch of one. Uh, we've got one hit, so we get plus one to our luck roll and we will do a straight, so we're not going to make it lucky in the first one, we'll make it lucky in the last one because we need to find something. A three plus one is a four. Does a four count as a yes? A four is a yes. Not an extreme yes, it's just a yes. So because of a yes, we then get to find something and we'll get to roll on the scavenging table. So we've got first digit, second digit, third digit. We get one roll on the massive scavenging table. First digit, I can't remember first, second, third, is that what I said? So three, four, five. Three, four, five, pasta and cold cough, coffee, one ration. All right, for now we'll call it one ration. So we get to find, we, we find uh, enough food for one ration in this bit. So this is the last section uh, and we will, we will do a scavenger roll if we get one, otherwise we're gonna say we find advanced medical gear uh, to take back to Birmingham. So uh, we've already found one walker. We didn't get any misses. We've still got a one. So I'm gonna add two, two to this roll. This is for the threat in the last area. Uh, wrong dice. Uh, which is a threat of a two, which means that they, they're, this is a room where there are, there are two, two zombies in this room who uh, one is sitting on the floor uh, in the corner of the room and, and there's a, uh, what's left of a corpse next to it uh, partially across its lap and the other one seems to be standing and then drifting to side to side next to it uh, as we're going to attempt to do a scout of the room I think that's six normal dice and two uh, stress dice as we're going to scout this room uh, we have no hits which means that we might get a walk, no, because there's no messing up. Uh, so that would be, we get nothing added onto our luck dice, but we're gonna definitely say no matter what, we will uh, get a find, we're gonna do a lucky, and because we didn't get anything, I'm gonna add two, two stress dice. So we don't find anything, but we don't trigger the walkers. And so we managed to get hold of some advanced medical gear. Uh, and we take that medical gear and we go back to uh, the haven. We're able to get back to the haven. Let's do a scout roll without our torch. Let's see if we can get back to the haven without triggering any, anything. Uh, we get back to the haven quite safely. Uh, and this is where we will see if Burmy has turned. Uh, we will do a... Uh, a, uh, and then we'll end it, then we'll end the session and we'll work out what happens next time. So does Burmy, has Burmy turned? I think that's a yes, isn't it? Because we want a high, because we want a yes. So Burmy has turned. So as we get back, Burmy has turned, he's on the cot, and we will work out what happens next session. So uh, that would be, we've just got all the gear. The episode ends as we're coming back into the Haven. Uh, the, uh, Nick and Damien, of course, aren't back. And we uh, see the cot, which is covered in blood. There's blood all over the place. Uh, and we can see there's smears and slippage on the floor. And Burmy isn't visible, where the camera turns to us and we just see that him uh, with dead eyes in the background of the shot uh, and that's where the episode ends and we find out what happens next time. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for watching, thank you for following along. Uh, if you like what you've seen, uh, please hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you would like to subscribe, 
I would actively encourage you to subscribe because it helps us out. Uh, and if you have subscribed, thank you very, very much. Uh, you, you are, you are, uh, I'm very grateful for it. Uh, other than that, uh, I shall see you next time where we find out what is going to happen with uh, our haven and our, our people, our survivors. See you later. Bye-bye.